And Lord, we just really thank you because you are good. We thank you because you answer prayers. Firstly, we're thankful for the progress we've made from the time from the past up to now. Thank you for health, provisions, relationships, blessings that money cannot buy. We are grateful. And Lord, we thank you for Nigeria. Because the, only the will of God will be established. No matter what the plan of man is, only the will of God will be established. We give you the praise and the glory. In this service, show us where to make adjustments. In Jesus' name we pray. Praise the Lord. Before you have your seats, keep standing, keep standing, keep standing. I wanted to jump on your feet three times and shout hallelujah. Is that okay? Okay, let's go. One to go. Two. Three. Look at your neighbor and say, warrior, how are you doing? God bless you. You can have your seats. Amen. Well, um, this series has been very, we've been learning a lot, we've been getting challenged, we've been getting stretched, and it's just wonderful to be here to just be able to teach God's word again. All right, so last week we had some assignment. I want to see those that are serious about it, because those are people that will take their comments. If you don't take my assignment seriously, uh, then I need to take you as serious as you take me. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Please don't keep sits. We have people standing at the back. You know, yeah, we have people standing at the back. So don't keep sits, please. Hallelujah. All right. So, what was the assignment last week? Who remembers? Microphones need to start moving. You remember. Thank you. Yes, you remember. Thank you. And have you done yours, right? Yes. Exactly. What was the assignment last week? Yeah. The reason why he said, what was the assignment last week is this. Because this is a life application teaching, if you don't do, it will never work. It's only doing that makes a difference. You can listen from now to next year. It's only doing that makes a difference. So you can give her the microphone. Yeah. So just because of time, we want to make sure that all comments are not beyond a minute and a half. Yeah, go ahead. So um, last week, Pastor Bolaji said that we should write down three words we feel when we are frustrated yeah. and then replace them with what we want to feel. Exactly. So, um, so w when you express that relationship frustration, yeah. so what are the former words you used to use? Um, not words. I used to feel fear. You used anger, to feel fearful. Hopelessness. So how do you feel fearful? That I will never find somebody for me. So, so you used to have that fear. What, what was that fear in your body? Think about it. The fear was it. Fear heights in the body. Think about it. My heart, I guess. It was. No, don't say you guess. Just relax. Mm -hmm. Put yourself in that moment. Where was that fear? Just in my heart. So it, you just feel it somewhere here. Yeah. Because fear heights in your body. You may not know it. Some of you, and that's why stammerers stammer. It hides in their voice. When, as soon as they want to stammer, because most of you think people like, stammering is natural, it's actually a function of fear, most of the time. So when they stammer, you see that they, they, the muscles will tighten up and they lose their voice. And, but they don't stammer all the time. They only stammer when they come under tension and they become afraid. So you feel the fear in your heart. And, and what does the fear tell you? Tell me exactly what the fear says. You will never find somebody for wow. you. You ask for too much. And what do you say when you begin to feel that way? So because of the assignment. You, you need to. You need, so no, because of no, the, no, before the assignment. So when you begin to feel that way, what do you say to yourself? Sometimes you don't say to somebody else. What do you say to yourself? I, I just take it. I'm like, okay. So, you, so what did she begin to say to herself? I will never find somebody else. So what has happened now? Um, since the assignment, she said that we should always say something positive. Yeah. So anytime it starts, I'm like, no, it's going to be better. I will find better. And wow. Has been. That, that's great. Have, have you tried this? Has it happened that you tried this? Yeah. Yes. And I what think. happened when you spoke back? I was, I was you need happy. to use microphone. I was happy. So, so instead of you fall into a frustrated state, yes. you found out that you corrected your state. Let me say something quickly here that's very powerful. This, I learned, I learned, I wish I learned this earlier in my life. Most of you think that your emotion dominates you. You don't realize that your emotion belongs to you. So when your emotion comes, they move you around. You don't realize that you can correct how you feel. You can correct it. And it's a big thing you have to correct. You can correct. If you feel sad, you can change it. That's wonderful. Thank you. Another person that did the assignment again? At least I have one person that did the assignment. 
So I said, what emotions do you feel when you feel emotionally frustrated? What words do you use? And I said, what other words do you want to use? Maybe someone that is married that feels emotionally frustrated, someone that is single feels that way. Yeah, and what words do you use? Okay? Yeah, let's go. What else did the assignment? Nobody? You did? Because there's no need to teach you something new if you're not doing the old one now. We should just go back to yes, last week's teaching and continue from there again. So there's someone that has a, needs a microphone here. The lady in front also. Yeah. Right. Good morning, Pastor. Good morning. Okay, so um, the emotions I feel when I'm frustrated, I feel this angry. regarding relationships. Remember? Yes. Yeah. Okay. I feel so angry at myself. You feel angry about yourself. Yes. So why do you feel angry about yourself? I feel like I can't do anything right. You feel as if you can't do anything right. Yes. Wow. And um, I feel like. I'm so do you notice that? How that one thing that happens in a relationship becomes our identity? How many of you identify with this? No, 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 no. I'm not going to do that with you. Not, not this one. You're not responding. <laughs> no. I'm telling you, if you just do this, I'm going to close the service and go back to my seat and we're going to pray and go home. If you choose to be here, you must choose to participate here. Yes, sir. Should I go? No, sir. All right. How many of you identify with this? Good. Good. So, people identify with this. So, what happens is this. Something happens and you make it to identity. And you say, and when you make it to identity, what happens? You produce because it's not who you are. You know, you will hear some more. Okay, let me get one or two more. Maybe a man or a, or a lady or a married person, someone. Just, just one more. Maybe in the middle. They say people are always at the back. They never call them. So, I'm trying to call the people at the back right now. Anybody at the back raising up their hands? There's someone raising up their hands here. Yeah. Praise the Lord. All right. So there's a lady that wanted to speak at the back. Yeah. Oh, you got. Good morning, Pastor. Good morning. Yes. So, Go ahead. So I used to tell myself it's a general problem and you know it's 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 affecting me, yes, and it made me feel sad, made me feel like as if I should have chosen lesser options. No, but but I love the way you think about it. That's a general problem. The reason why is that once you don't personalize your problem, it reduces the pressure. It, it's a great thing. It's a because some of you, some of you, the thing is that. The reason why you have bigger problems is that you think your problem is personal. But it's not personal. 1 Corinthians 10, 13 says this way. It says, there's no temptation that is not common to men. You know the problem? The problem is that we don't read. The Bible does not cover a lot of personal stories. Do you know how many times Mary must have been jilted? Do you know how many times Peter tried to marry and he failed? Do you know maybe the reason why Paul never married was someone broke his heart? So when you read the Bible and, and you see all that in the Bible, you know, so, so it's a great place to be. Okay, so how does this affect you negatively? Yeah. So um, sometimes, even with the knowledge that it's a general problem, yeah. sometimes if I go to weddings or like my friends get engaged, it still, it still hits me. Okay. In that moment. And so I, I know what you mean. So because it's a general problem, you cannot have this negative standard that, nah, it's, it's, it's difficult. It's not possible. It's exactly. Yeah. So, so that's extreme. So it's a general problem. It's difficult. It's not possible. Okay. That's great. That's great. Thank you all for sharing. Any other person want to share? Is there any man that wants to share? Any married person that will sing love single people? So want to jump. All right. First Corinthians, sorry. Joshua chapter one. Yeah, Joshua chapter one. Joshua chapter one verse three. The Bible says this. This is God speaking to Joshua. He says, Every place the sole of your feet shall tread upon, I have given you. As I've said unto you, from the wilderness unto Lebanon, even to the great land, even to the river Ephrates, or the land of the Hittites, to the great sea, towards going out the sun, and of the coast, there shall not be any man able to stand before you. So God is saying that, notice what I'm saying. God is telling Joshua that I promised you all of these wonderful things. What a day. God has promised you a wonderful marriage. God has promised you a wonderful family. God has promised you a wonderful this. But God has promised you all of these things. 
just like all of us are married here god gave you a promise of a wonderful marriage that is wonderful some of you are single here god has given you a promise of a wonderful husband a wonderful wife so the same thing for joshua joshua was given promise of what do they call it of physical land and it was called the promised land yes or no so in the old testament the promised land was a physical land in the new testament the promised land is the fulfillment of the promise that god made to you personally you need to get it in the old testament the promised land was a physical land in the new testament the promised land is the fulfillment so when you say you've stepped into the promised land in the new testament you've stepped into the fulfillment of the promises that god has given you praise god so let's keep reading you, you what is it going to do relationship you're going to see right now then he says this so he gave him the promise i said promise then he said there shall not be any man be able to stand before thee as i was with moses so will i be with you i will not fail you nor forsake you what you need to ask yourself is this if god had given joshua the promised land why is he saying things like i will not fail you i will not forsake you i will not abandon you why is he saying that because on your journey to the fulfillment of the promise you will feel failed you will feel forsaken you will feel abandoned who has felt this so far that shows you're on your part of the promised land the reason, you know the reason I'm saying so? The reason why is that the things that should encourage you that you're on part are the things that are discouraging you because you don't know. So, God told Joshua ahead of time. He says, as you head towards the promised land, you're going to feel forsaken. But remember, I will not forsake you. I want to ask you a question. If I tell you something, um, when you, if I tell you this and I said, as you're going, make sure you take a torchlight. What does that mean? That means that place will be dark. Yes or no? So, when God says, I will not forsake you, I will not fail you, I will not abandon you, that means there will be seasons you will feel as if he forsook you. There will be seasons as if you feel as if he failed you. There will be seasons like that. The seasons should be proof you're on the path. But because you've not been taught, you thought the season means that God is no way, is away from you. Glory to God. So, if the season says you're on the path, you know what happens to you? Then you become confident in the season. But when the season doesn't say that, then you begin to pull away and begin to go. So, you're already on the path, but you don't feel that way. Then you go to another path and not realize that you are now off track. So, a lot of you have gone off track because you thought the path should be different. The path that was felt as if God abandoned you was the real path. The path that caused you heartbreak was the path. But your perspective was like God is not here. So you drifted towards what was easy. You don't know that sometimes what is easy is destructive. The Bible says that the road, wide is the road that leads to destruction. It said narrow is the path of life. Are you here somebody? Okay, let me ask some people here. Maybe this will help practically. Will you give me some stories where you feel as if maybe all of you that are married or maybe all of you that have gone advanced in a relationship where you feel as if God has appointed you and meanwhile it turned out to be a blessing in your marriage. It turned out to be a blessing in your relationship eventually. Anybody here? Wave your hands. Let me see. God bless you. Let, let, God, God, God bless you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's going to be... That lady is, is wanting to share. Thank you. Thank you. You need to move faster or you need to move faster. Yeah. Thank you. There's a lady over there. Good day. last year June and I was so angry I cried a lot but three months down the line I was happy that I left because the things that happened I was like hey so if I was still with this man this is the things that I will be going through ah thank God though ah. Because I, I fought with I was there to fight with God. I went to my room and I was screaming. That what did I do? That why this is another one again. But when I saw what happened three months later, sir, what happened three months later? Ah. <laughs> Just give us one or two. They stay looking for him for that he was owing people money. <laughs> Praise God. So. It was not as honest, as rich as he portrayed. <laughs> and you know the thing, if you have not left him at that time and you left him there, they say you could not stay with your man. Ah. 
Let me give you a true life story. There's a lady in our church. She used to be in the choir. She, you know, she used to be in the choir. And she was dating another person within our choir. Very amazing story. This is a long time ago. It's not recent. And they got, you know, they got engaged and all of those kind of things. They even did the introduction. And um, for some reason, the guy called off everything. By this time, they had chosen wedding date. They had even paid for venue. The lady was downcasted. But when I saw her after some time, he said, Pastor, I'm grateful you didn't work out. He said, because I saw his real character. I said, what do you mean? He said, Pastor, you do not believe. My father gave that guy, the husband to be, the money to go and pay for the venue. He went to pay for the venue. When the wedding was cancelled, my husband to be went behind, claimed the money, and spent it. He said, can you imagine the height of irresponsibility? It's not like he paid for the venue. My father paid, you know, like the Yoruba culture. He said, that kind of person, in fact, when I met the father-in-law, the, the father-in-law to be, he said that, I'm grateful, Lord. So maybe it was my money was looking for. And the reason why I'm saying so to you is this. Is this. So when God says to Joshua, and, and the reason why is that meaning matters. You know why meaning matters? When you see your relationship as God is punishing me, when you see your marriage as God is punishing me, when you see your husband as God is punishing me, and my husband is training me, God is training me, your response is very different. Because when you see it as a training, you are so positive, like, oh wow, oh wow, oh wow. When you see it as a punishment, you feel so fearful. Someone say hallelujah. So we're talking about, we're, we're, we're talking about, let's keep going. So we're, we're just going, we're just going to sleep in quickly. So the Bible says this. See what the Bible says here. He says, now, it says, let me read from verse 5 again. I'm going to read from verse 6. It said, there shall not be any man be able to stand before you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so will I be with you. And I will not fail thee, nor forsake thee. So every time you feel this way, God has given you a word ahead of time. Glory to God. Hallelujah. But Pastor George, you need to help me with the sitting and the space. Hello, Pastor, in the back. You need to help me with that. And yeah. You just need to help me coordinate if there's an overflow or something. So this is what the Bible says now. Watch this. It now says this. This is what I'm going to. This is what I'm going to. Verse 6. Let's read together. I want to go. It says what? And what? That what? Uh-huh. Verse 7. What again? And what? Hold on. God says that. God told Joshua. For you to get the promise, you need two qualifications. You must be strong and courageous. What does that mean? You will never enter the promise you are frustrated. You know what I'm saying? So, this is the reason why people have marital delay. Because they are not strong and courageous. Every small problem with marriage, I will divorce you. Every small problem in relationship, I, 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 I will not love again. He said, for you to enter, be strong. This was God telling Joshua, you want to enter the promised land? He said, be strong. You will see things that will, be, that will make you weak. In marriage, you will see what will make you weak. Men will show you pepper. He said, be strong. <laughs> Women will show you fire. He said, be strong. <laughs> what has been shown pepper? See, see, I wanted to notice. I wanted to notice. Let me tell you something. So this is what happens to people. You know, I was talking to one of our members very close. I'm sure she's watching online right now. And we're just having a very close conversation yesterday. And I said, how do you feel about relationship? And she said, well, after what happened to me in 2014. And I said, and, and when she's, let me tell you something. I know that a lot of you have this, the, wow. But don't respond like that because you don't know their story. He said, it was in 2014, I thought I would be married. He said, but here am I today. And what happens to you is that once you have those terrible experiences, two things you lose. You lose strength. You lose courage. Frustration is, relationship and marital frustration is the tool Satan used to take you out of your marriage and marital blessing. If he wants to destroy you, he will make sure you feel frustrated first. 
what I'm saying is that frustration is a choice. Frustration is what? It's a choice. Look at them and say frustration is a choice. Are there things that will frustrate you? Yes. Will you feel frustrated? Yes. But to remain there is a choice. Why am I saying that you must not, as a married person, the reason I'm challenging you is this. Oh my God. I want us to do a test. Everybody, look around. Look for everybody that is wearing black. Once you find everyone wearing black, raise up your right hands. Look around. Look for everybody wearing black. Once you find everybody wearing black, look around. Look at people moving on their hands, right? Those of you online, I feel bad for you that you can't see this. Hold on. Leave your hands up that way. Leave your hands up that way. Leave your hands up that way. You've seen anybody wearing black, right? Microphones, are they moving? Give to anybody that's raised up their hand. Anybody raised up their hand. Anybody. Anybody. Give to... There's a lady, they gave the microphone to you. Wonderful. Uh, wearing black, that's good. Who is wearing white? How many people are wearing white? You see, she doesn't know. You know why? Because whatever you focus on is what you notice. You know what I'm saying, so? If you focus on your frustration, even though there is frustration and there is joy, what you will notice is what? Frustration. You don't, listen to this very powerful principle. Write this down. You don't experience life. You experience the life you focus on. You don't experience life. You experience the life you focus on. So, guess what? In life, there's frustration. In life, there is joy. In life, there is anger. All of these things happen in life. But guess what? What you experience is what you focus on. And this is why I'm teaching about overcoming relationship and marital force. Let me ask you, all of you that are going through a terrible time in your marriage, I want to ask you a question. Is your marriage 100% terrible all the time? No. No. All of you that are having a tough time in your relationship, is your relationship 100% bad all the time? No. But the difference is that maybe your relationship is 70% good and 30% what? Frustrating. The challenge is that you will focus all your energy on the 30% frustration. And whatever you focus on multiplies. A lot of you are here. This, you, how many of you have men shown again? Hands up. You raise up your hand. Raise up your hand again. You've shown. Men have shown you fire. Or women have shown you fire. Or your mind has shown you. Hands up quickly. Good. Come on. Hands up. Don't lie. The question is that all those relationships that showed you fire, were there no times that so showed you love? Huh? Someone said, it didn't happen at all. <laughs> Come on, you didn't date Lucifer now. There were times the person also showed you love. But the difference is this. Over time, you are focused on what the frustration. And the more you focus on the frustration, that's what you see, that's what you experience. And guess what? So this is, what, this is why you must overcome frustration. Because the more you focus on frustration, that's what you start to experience. Then two, the more you become frustrated, you will frustrate the other person. So there are some men, married men, frustrating their wives. And the reason why is that they sense some frustration and they frustrate the wife and frustrate the marriage. And there's some married women frustrating their marriage. And there's some single people frustrating everybody. <laughs> what is what I'm talking about? <laughs> Glory to God. I'm just telling you this is real. And that's why, let's read the scripture we read last week. I, I, see, let me tell you, my goal in this teaching, you know, I have a lot of people that teach about marriage and relationship from the point of, this is what you have to do, marriage, this is what you have Let me tell you why it doesn't work. I don't believe it works. I know all those teachings. I know the popular people in Nigeria and the world. I don't believe it works. The reason why is that the primary emotional state you are determines what you do. So it's not as if you don't know what to do, but you don't have energy to do it. 
So can we go to the root? The root is the exhaustion. The root is the frustration. So they tell you that when you meet him, be kind. Don't say anything bad. This and this. Don't think of the past. As soon as he starts, everything you start doing auto. As soon as he starts, you just move. It's not something you even want to do. And that's why I told you to write last week. Write the three emotional states you are in when you feel frustrated. You know why? The reason why is that once you get to that emotional state, you can easily catch yourself and pull back and say, no, I can see. For example, when I'm going to get, when my wife is going to get angry, I can tell you, my wife heads, maybe it goes higher. Yeah, my wife's head will go higher. Yeah, then our English will become very strong. The reason why is that anger has a pattern. Frustration has a pattern. Joy has a pattern. Merriment has a pattern. When I want to get angry, I know. It's my walking. Yeah. Yeah. My, it's my walking. The thing is that before I get there, I can know my pattern and I can interrupt it. Why am I saying this? This is where I want you to understand the crux of the teaching because, you know, when, as all of you came here, this and this and this, it's not a magic formula. What I'm saying so is that the more you feel frustrated, what you will see is, and that's why I asked the lady, I said, I said, look for everybody wearing black. He said, this one, this one, who is wearing white? He said, I don't know. Meanwhile, just behind that, there's someone wearing white. Just in front of the someone wearing white. But because that was not our focus, she never saw it. The question is that how will you train yourself to start seeing joy and not frustration? Because, to be fair, honest with you, some of you, there's nothing on good relationship. It's the fact that you see through frustration that is destroying it. What's you, your relationship is just life. For a, you know, and, and your relationship comes, frustration comes from a lot of things. Number one, it could be just expectations. Some of you just expect your husband, your wife, your boyfriend or girlfriend to be somebody else. You just expect them to be somebody else. Some of you want to change them. Some of you want to, them to be somebody else. Some of you want to change them. And you know, the difficulty about changing someone is this. Nobody can change somebody else. Everybody can, must change himself. So once you make changes on your focus, you'll be frustrated. I mean, I was listening to someone yesterday and he said, just to let you know, this guy had done a lot of studies on marriage. It's just to let you know, couples never change. They just understand their limitations. So see what God told Joshua. God told Joshua, you're going to go to promise. So the thing is this, what is the opposite of frustration? Strength and courage. What is courage? It didn't go well. We'll do it again. We shall, we shall, we would work on it again. One of the big reasons why we have the highest rate of divorce in our country and the world is that people give up on love too easily. It's a strong and a good courage. So, you've had a divorce. How is your heart? And I'm, and I'm speaking to all the single moms here. I mean, the divorce was terrible. But there was a time it was fantastic. There was a time that you guys did crazy things together. Gosh! Crazy! When you were married, what you did sexually, it was out of this world. Now, the way you talk about it, like, hey, I, I regret me. But you don't regret everything. There were parts you regret. Why do you turn the whole thing as frustration? Because human nature, we allow the negative experience to dominate the positive experience. I mean, many of you don't remember how many times you passed. You remember how many times you failed. All the courses you passed, you don't remember. The ones you had carried over, you remember. I'm just telling you how human experience is. Praise the Lord. So why am I asking you to change your frustration? I'm, I'm the, let's go to this number chapter 13 verse 39. So the first thing is this. I'm asking you to change it because if you do not change your frustration, then you will not be able to enter the promise. Why? Frustration is the tool for, go, for Satan to take you out of the receiving zone. You must remember that. Frustration is the tool 
to for satan to take you out of the so when you feel frustrated tell yourself i'm under attack numbers chapter 13 verse 39 glory to god are you getting this today anybody that wants to share an experience that you feel as if this is why i can't get over it and i want to help someone that is frustrated and say this is how you can think about it numbers 13 verse 39 do you have it number 13 verse 39 look at it on the screen number 13 verse 39 do you have it this is why you should see what the bible says number 13 verse 39 let's read it again i want to go oh 33 33 sorry 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 33 the Bible says, and we saw the sons, let's just want to go. Did you see that? Question, were they giants? Caleb and Joshua saw them. They thought they were bread to eat. They others saw them and saw them as giants. You don't see life the way it is, you see life the way you are. So when you feel frustrated maritally, you will see frustration, you will experience frustrated, frustration, and you will attract what? Frustration. You will attract men that are frustrated. If you are married, you will bring frustration out of your wife. You will bring frustration out of your husband. But because that's the way you are. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. Let's jump quickly. Wow. Is this helpful already? The reason, so why am I saying all of this thing? The reason why that I'm hoping I can challenge you to say, I don't want to be this way because that's where you need to start from. That decision that says, I don't want to be this way. How do you know you're frustrated? You're uninterested. Can we identify? Can you identify? Yeah, you're uninterested. You know the thing about being frustrated and uninterested? You'll be interested when it's too late. You'll be interested though, but it'll be too late. Then when you're uninterested, do you know you send the signal to everybody around you? I'm uninterested. Because your, your lack of interest will sabotage your success. Who knows what I'm Okay, let, let me give someone the microphone. Who wants to share an experience with me? Anybody? Yeah. Yeah, thank you, my sister. There's a lady in the middle. Yeah, good. Then we'll now move to how to resolve this and we close the service today. something good is happening but you're more focused on the negative yeah now there's something that i've been trusting god for for, yeah. for years for yeah. a long time i want to talk about your relationship not something yes Some, yeah. they're together they're together okay so around towards the end of last year okay that breakthrough came yeah but around the time it came i had a relationship a bad experience in a relationship yeah and this is something that I've been expecting for a long time that came. Yep. I couldn't focus on that. Wow. I couldn't rejoice. I couldn't. My friends are like, you've been expecting this thing for a long time. You're supposed to be excited. But I was so focused on the pain that I was going through. Wow. That I couldn't even soak up. The enemy the used things. that bad experience to steal your joy. Yes. Yes. Wow. Wow. And I couldn't even move. Like, I'm still struggling to move forward from that place. Like, yep. I need to embrace this wonderful And, and you know what? What you embrace, multiply. So once you embrace the bad experience, what happens? It multiplies. Yes, yes. Once you embrace the good experience, it, what happens? It multiplies. Yes. yes. So, that's, uh, so I've, I've, I've been stuck. You won't listen to that now. She's been stuck. But the reason why she's been stuck is because she embraced a bad experience. The first thing is that you need to stop using the word I've been stuck. You need to be there. Like, I embrace this. The reason why that your word becomes your reality. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you for sharing that. Who else wants to share about some stories of frustrations? Yeah, let's go. Let's go quickly. Yeah, there's a lady over here. There's a lady over here. Just, just here. Yeah, Frust good and bad were happening by choice to focus on frustration. Thank you so much, sir. Yeah. Um, this is about my colleague at work. Yeah. She's married. Okay. And um, because she's she has been having issues in her marriage, I noticed it because of our relationship with me and other of our colleagues. Yeah. She's distracted. She gets really cranky. So our frustration so at home began yes, to affect so her job. So I had to talk to her. And she mentioned that she's tired of um, correcting her husband. And, wow. And she's tired of correcting her husband. Yes, she's tired of 
correcting him and she started. This is what I said. You see what comes first? Pointing out now? Those two because she wants to change the husband. Yes. So you don't now, change someone, you inspire change. You don't change someone, you what? You inspire change. I'll give an example. Um, Vicky, where are you? Come. Ah! Why did you hug me? I inspired the hug. What people want to do is that, won't you hug me? <laughs> Can't you, don't you know you should hug your husband? But I can inspire the hug by my action. Instead of you trying to change someone, what can I do that can inspire them to that respect? Look at that. Praise God. Really good. So she's trying yes, to Yes, sir. Yeah. So I, I tried to speak with her. She, she, so what's the question? Just go quickly. The quick question with. is, what should I do to, to her for her? Like, I'm concerned because she has given up on the marriage. I will tell you something. And there's nothing you can do for her like that. I will tell you what you need to do. I will tell you what you can do if there's something you can do. You need to inspire. She needs to change her state of mind. The reason why is that she's already in the negative. Whatever you say. That's why some of you, when you advise someone, they don't get it. Because they're already in a state of mind. So until that state of mind moves, nothing will make sense. They will be acting in alignment with that state of mind of leaving the marriage. What? She wants to leave. Yep. So, so the thing is that whatever you can do is to, first of all, move her from that state of mind. Today, I'm going to do something. I'm going to move you from frustration to joy. Just, yeah. I'm going to do that. I'm going to, I'm going to show you what to do. Praise the Lord. All right. I, a frustrating story. Someone that has frustration and joy. And, you know, yes, someone is speaking. I don't know why the men are not speaking today. Even though being at the same, friends to say something. You know, I don't know why. Yeah. Good afternoon. Okay. Um, my name is Stephanie. I'm a single mom. Yeah. Um, You're a single mom? Yes, I yeah. am. <laughs> take one. Take one. Go give it to her. That's a rose from me to you. Thank you, Pastor. Yeah. I told you that today I'm blessing single moms. That's a rose from me to you. I don't know if you got a Valentine gift. That's Valentine from me I to you. from you also. You, you got from me already? NLP, yes. Oh, yo, you came for NLP, so that's yes. a second one right now. Thank so you. give it to her. Yeah. Thank you. So continue, single mom. My, my, okay, I'm ill in birth. I still have a. Birth. The reason why I said continue single mom is this. Until you see it as a positive, it's not be a positive. Let me tell you the bit of a single mom. When I was in school, I was a student pastor. In my year two, one of our, year two, year three, one of our members got pregnant. They, the boyfriend and girlfriend, they got themselves pregnant. <laughs> you know. And they decided to keep the baby. So, in my part three, they had the child. I couldn't. It was terrible. But guess what? That girl is getting married now. She's getting married in the next two, three years. I'm like, you guys have a grandchild. Oh, God. I'm like, that's so cool. I'm only telling you that you can look at it from the positive and the negative. Why all your friends are still looking for ring bearer? Your child will be ring bearer for them. So you can look at it. So, you know, I look at them like, ah, man, before I have a grandchild. So just imagine these people, they're like, oh, you know, you know, my grandchild. I'm like, ah, I can have a child that has a grandchild. So their child is graduated from university. It was tough. Not that it wasn't tough. But that's the beauty. Sometimes you must remember that the problems don't last forever. One of the ways Satan attacks people is to make them think a permanent problem, a temporary problem is a permanent problem. When you have a problem, ask yourself, is this temporary or permanent? It will give you peace. Back to you, ma'am. Okay, so there's something you said not quite long that got to me. You yeah. said, currently you, you're not interested, but when you'll be interested, it will be too late. Yeah. Now, my, my, my issue is when it comes to relationship and probably future kids, yeah. it's a no for me and I can give reasons why I don't want to. 
Uh, I'm in my healing process, all thanks to September program, and yeah. I'm open to love. But when it comes to marriage or childbirth, it's a no for me. Okay. So the question is, why is it no for you? Uh, okay. First, when it comes to marriage... Where are you? Can you stand? I can't see. I'm trying to look for you. Can you see? Yeah. Uh, tell, tell me. Okay. So, so why is it no for you, yeah? Okay, when it comes to marriage, it's a no for me because I've had bad experience. I'm so one rule. Um, I'm so filled with love, but the people that approach are very deceitful. And with with my experience and pressing with people, I have they, they keep telling me you're the one in love. They are not in love. So I know me. How do I know them? Okay. So the reason why you've said no to marry took up your of your bad experiences. Yes, Pastor. So what you said to me is that the past equals the future. Sorry, sir. What you've said to me indirectly is that the past is equal to the future. No, I, no, it's not. But that's what you said just now. I mean, that's my fear. You know, no, no, no. But, but that's what you said. So what you said is that because of what I've experienced in the past, the same thing will happen. What in the future? The question is this. If you do something and you fail at it, I think what you need to do is to learn why you failed and how to do better. It's not to give up on your dream. The reason why is that you're going to grow up to be 50 and you'll be very unhappy. You'll be very unhappy because you know there's a part of you that is full of love and wanted to share with someone. And because of your fear, you never made it happen. And because of your fear of failure, you eventually have regrets. And regret is always more painful than the fear of not trying. Tell me what you think. Okay, so everyone, especially my grandma, they keep telling me to, to try. Men are different and all of that. Yeah. Yes, I did, but same pattern. Yeah, so the question is that if the same pattern does not tell you that you had a common denominator in the pattern, I will agree. Exactly. 100%. So if you're the common department, what needs to change? I need to change. But you keep changing the guys. It's you that needs to change. Okay. So currently, I'm changing since September. Awesome. Yes. So today, before I came to church, someone was like, um, I would like to submit my application if you're not married. And I'm like, no, I'm not ready because I'm still working on me. Awesome. It's good to say... I'm not ready. Not, I'm not open. Do you get it? Thank you. So, so what's the difference? The difference of I'm ready, not ready, that I'm work in process, but I'm going to come about. I'm not open means it's a no. Why do you want to get married? to share my love with someone like it's that sweet marriage is that sweet so i want to ask you a question what are you willing to change to make this dream happen did you see what you did just now please can you keep the camera on her? i need the camera to be on her yeah just keep the camera if you can split the screen please split the screen as soon as i said so i said what do you need to change you know what she did what did you do do it again what you did as soon as I asked her what did you do yeah she went oh. you know that is a sarcastic response because she's really saying I'm willing to do nothing and guess what if she's willing to do nothing she will have what nothing and this is what it is she's just an example of all of us a lot of you here is it if it's going to come, let it come. It will never come that way. It will never come for me. If my marriage is going to get better, it will get better. It will never get better that way. You must intentionally walk towards it. Let me ask you a final question. Can you put the camera back up? I want, I want to look at her. That's what I'm saying. So I need, I need to see her. I can't see her from here very well. I want to close your eyes. Think of a time where you were madly in love. Shh. 
how you held your hands, what you wore, where you went to, how you held hands. How, how did you feel when he looked at you? How did your heart beat? What did you do? Open your eyes. Open your eyes. Microphone. What will you do to have that experience? Give it more time. You do? I'll try. What if I try more? Tell me what you will try more. Okay. It's so okay. But just tell me what. It's just you and me right now. Just tell me what you will try more. I don't want to see it previously. I want to talk about the future. Okay, what so are you going to try more? The reason why is that we need to leave the past alone. We can't change it. I'm going to be more open-minded. What does more open-minded mean? You're going to choose to trust again. Yes. You're going to choose to believe again. Is that what you're saying? Yes, Pastor. Is that what you want for yourself? That is what I... So why are you holding your back yourself? You're the one holding back yourself all your life. And, and the reason why you're the one holding back yourself is this. You go into the relationship hoping they'll disappoint you and they do that. Because everyone is a trial. You don't go to try, you go to win. Let me tell you something. The difference between what you did right now and what you did before was that. Let me tell you what I did to you. I brought back the images of what you experienced. And I told you, you've experienced this before. It's somewhere there. You can experience it again. And the thing is that you keep saying they did all this to me. You never said this is what I did to destroy it. What you can fix is you. And where you fix you, everything will get better. And I'm glad you're on that journey already. Thank you, Pastor. Let's appreciate her. Let's appreciate her. That's wonderful. That's wonderful. That's wonderful. Let me take one more story and I'll, end, I'll round up with my last story. Let me take one more story and I'll round up with that. Let's give her a big, let's give, let's, let's appreciate her. You're wonderful. 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 I, I know I saw some people crying as she was sharing her story. And yeah, even online people are saying a lot of things. Does this guy want to say something? That does, this guy want to say something? Yeah. Is that, is that a guy or a girl? It's a guy I want first. That's a guy. I, I want to get there's, there's a guy with a cap here. Hold on, to, come to who I point you to. There's a guy right in front of me here. I want to see the other guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a guy here first. Yeah, that's him. Yeah, then I will take the guy with the glasses. Yes, sir. Good afternoon. Yeah. Charles, do you want to say something? Hold on, hold on. Charles, you want to say something? I'm going to give you the microphone, Charles. Yeah, continue. My vision for over time has been, I mean, what we call spec. Um, somehow, I'm somehow overly um, attracted to, in quotes, ladies who are thick. Yeah. But for some ladies that what? What? Big. Okay. Okay, yeah, come. But the frustrating part about it is, I always get the opposite. Okay. So watch, watch, watch. I want to show you something. Are you, are you watching him? I want to show you something. You always get the opposite, right? Huh? Yes, sir. It's percent of the time. Of course, I know why you get the opposite. You know why? You're not proud of what you want. I saw it just now in you. You couldn't even say it. Did you see how you're looking now? Because, is that not true? True, sir. It's that simple. It's right there. I, I can see through him. So, he's not proud of what he wants. Listen to me. The Bible says, as a man thinketh, not what he desireth, so is he. So, your mind moves you exactly. So, in your mouth, you're saying that I, I want big people, but your heart, no, no way. I, I, you know the thing? You need to be honest with yourself. You're double-minded. 
what your mouth and what your mind is saying is very opposite. Does it make sense to you? Tell me something. Give me, tell me how you felt bad about this. Because, I mean, I had to pretend to these said ladies and I just felt really bad because I just tried to be nice. You, so so let, let me help you. I'm, I'm, hold on. I'm, I'm going to really help him today. Hold on. K listen, if, you, if I see you talking, I'll give you the microphone. Yeah. Hold on. Sir, what makes you ashamed of these big ladies? No, not the big ladies. I'm talking about the skinny the, ones. The slim ones. Yes. Okay, why are you ashamed of the... Because you, what, what makes you... So, you like big ladies, but... But you're attracting the other kind. So the ones you don't, the ones you want to attract, what makes you feel bad about them? To be honest, because you know, um, I'm into the showbiz, so sometimes you'll be like, you're going out, and they don't just fit into that. Excuse me. Give her the microphone. She's talking. Give her the microphone. She's talking. Give her the microphone. She's talking. No, 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 no. Oh, hold on. That's your warning sign. That's your warning sign. Because. Talk, you would not talk. Son is talking. Yeah, give her the microphone. Tell me why you're talking. Yeah, lady, lady, right in front of me because she's ah. Tell me why you're talking. Give her, give her, give her the microphone. Yeah, yeah. Tell me. Actually, I'm on the big side, and what you just you're on the big said, side. Like, I always feel that. No, way. I'm just wondering. Like I'm like you look like. <laughs> Maybe I can't see you well. You know. Do you know? I think I'm on the big side. I hope you know that. Yeah. Ask my wife. I'm always asking my wife that's all oh, that, that you know. I'm, I think I'm on the big side. I'm telling you, I, you know, just a lot of things you think, you know, about yourself. Yeah. The reason why is that perception is reality. Is what you think. Continue. I've experienced exactly what you just said. That was why I. You screamed that. that way. What did you experience? I've been in two different relationships and. I've had this issue of you want to go out with someone you're dating and they end up going with someone else because maybe your size does not fit in. Did they tell you it was your size? I always know because, I mean, how did you always know? some certain kind of way. Uh, how do you always know? The reason why I'm saying so is this. Should I be, look at me, lady. You know, I'm not honest with you. I don't think it's them. I think you don't feel by yourself tell me the truth are you happy with the way you look tell me the truth use the microphone tell me <laughs> thanks 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 yeah. yeah tell me you don't look at me look at me honey look at me the way you feel about yourself is what you project onto them and is what they give back to you. The first thing is this. Let me tell you. Everybody listen to this. Listen to this. And I'm saying this because you can ask my wife is here. One of the biggest things I struggled when I got married was this. Me. I couldn't find... The, one of, I had a lot of problems when I got married. Loads. The first thing was that I didn't understand what was going on. I didn't understand my emotion. I didn't understand because it was because I was a spiritual man. So they, they spoke to me in a certain way. I didn't understand some of the things. But I began to find words. The, first, the biggest fear in relationship and marriage is this that you're not enough. And that's what you're struggling right now. I know someone in this church, if you are not size 18, 16, he cannot date you. The guy is slimmer than me. So you know the problem? The problem is that because you feel that way about yourself, it begins to what? Affects them. Because you know what? The way you feel, you send it out. You can hide it with good clothes, but it will come out. So look at me. You know what you're going to do? For the next 21 days, when you wake up in the morning, you're going to say to yourself, I'm wonderful. I'm beautifully made. I am enough. 
Thank you. The reason, you know the reason I'm saying so? So this lady now, this, this is a problem with all the relationship teachings you hear. They will not tell her that. Go to parties. Do this. Do this. Do this. All those things will not work because the foundation has issues. Back to you, my brother. Back to you. So, the reason why because if you date these big people and you take them to showbiz, then it's a problem. I want to ask you a question. Do you want to marry for others or for you? You have a microphone. Tell me. For What's others. Like for me. For you. Do you want to be happy at home or outside? Both. Both. Very true. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for being honest. Now, the last question to you is this. There's something you're saying that if they are big, your friends will not like them. Yes or no? What? I I'm turning around. Tell me what you're saying. Tell me the right thing. What I'm saying is I'm attracted yeah. to the thick girls. To the right? thick girls, yeah. But for some weird reasons, the slim ones seem to be the ones hovering. Yeah. So I try as much as possible nice to these slim girls what i prefer the thick girls wow yeah so you but, probably mix okay so, so i can close with this i can so this is what i'm saying to you what is the prevalent please just hold on eh? i know that you want to preach with me eh? just hold on <laughs> yeah so my brother just to say to you what do you think that having a big a thick girl in a relationship would do to the industry, to your industry. What do you think? Well, I mean, you know, you just when you come into the event, you're bouncing, people are looking at you like, oh, couple goes, the kind of stuff. And I'm saying the reality. I love you. Just keep saying. Leave the hypocrites alone. Exactly. Yeah. So, you know, it comes with a lot of pride and ego, and people are like, ah, ah get how far now? How you take around this babe? Good. Are you a bad guy? Good. Kind of thing. You know, good. You know what you're saying to me? You know what you're saying? You really believe that girls that are slim are very attractive and they're high standards. That's what you've said. And girls, see, the problem is this is what you're saying. That girls that are slim and all of them are the bad standard. That these are the bad girls. These are the, when I say bad, like this is a big standard. It's what you're telling yourself. I've seen very slim people, wonderful. Big people, wonderful. Listen, sir, it's not the industry, it's the way you think. You know, when I was a younger pep, when I was a younger person and I was single, most pastors' wives are very yellow. Have you noticed that? It's better now, it's better now. But when I was younger, they were like, so I'm like, no, no. So there was a kind of person that a pastor's wife should date. You know, someone like when you pass when pastor Moses comes in like this, ah, bright and morning star. <laughs> but make no difference. The meaning you give to bigger and or slim is the meaning you want to give to it. I think of it in another way. What meaning do you give to it? That she's not attractive because she's big. You chose to think that way. You'll be surprised. People believe that bigger people are more fruitful than people that are slim. Just funny, funny ideologies. Is it true? Not based on science. Not based on science. So the question is that the re what is troubling you is the meaning to which you are giving to all of these things. So if you want to change your life, change your meaning. I want to use you to close the sermon so that we can close. I know you want to stay till next week, but you will close. Yeah. Every frustration has a belief that supports it. That's what I'm going to. Every frustration has what? A belief that supports it. One belief, my husband is selfish. My wife is annoying. Men are calm. Big women are not fine. I'm saying so because behind every frustration is a belief. 
So if you're going to change your frustration, this is your assignment this week. What is the belief that is fueling my frustration? If you don't marry very early, you'll not get married. There's a problem with marrying very early. As a matter of fact, people that marry below 25 have a higher divorce rate. The highest is in that bandwidth. And the reason why is that they don't know themselves before they get married. So the question is this. So can someone tell me their frustration? Just one minute, please. Don't know story. Just one minute, my frustration. Yeah. Yeah, the two of them. Yeah. Two of th- these two people. Yeah. These two people. Yeah. This lady that's shaking her head in purple. That's the one I want. Yeah. Because she raised up her hand and she's. Yeah. This one. Yeah. Exactly. Take. Yeah. 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 Tell me. What's frustrating? Okay. I can show you five people if they don't tell you that the child is not from their father you will never know you know the reason why you're stuck and frustrated because that's the way you choose to think and the Bible says this as a man thinketh in his heart so is he some time ago we heard the story of Father Kemi she might even be in church right now and Father Kemi had huge support I don't know if you saw the video of the single mom in our church Huge support. The moment you say there's nobody, see, what did they say? There's nobody. Remember that what you focus on is what you find. So you never find that person. But the moment you say there, there's going to be somebody. I want to ask you a question. You're a Christian, right? No, you should use my. I want, to, I, want to, I want to talk to you. You're a Christian, right? Yes, use I the am. microphone. Yes, I am. You are. Did God know you were, you, you'll be a single mom? No. He didn't know. When you became a single mom, God was like, oh my God, I never knew that. Is, it, is that what God thought? Uh, he, knew. He, he knew. He knew, right? He knew. He knew. And he still gave a desire to get married. Why is he confusing us? That means he must have prepared for someone that will marry you despite the fact that you're a single mom. Did you say she's moving ahead because she's struggling with accepting it? That's your belief. I'm just showing you how you, you need to go back and watch this if you can find the video because you're like, let me tell you, like, you're like, I don't agree, I don't agree. Hey, the, the thing is that if you don't agree, you're right. You agree, you're right. But whatever you agree to becomes your reality. We're closing. What is frustrating me? Write it down. What is the belief behind what is frustrating me? My husband is selfish. Because the way I've gotten better is that I have to think through my frustrations and say, what is the belief that's behind it? Praise God. Have you been helped today? Stand on your feet and shout, yes! Stand on your feet, everyone.